Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 23 career mode and today we're here for the 21st and final round of our full Moto3 season for the Valencian Grand Prix. Now if you didn't see the last episode at the Qatar Grand Prix I do recommend you go check that one out. It was a little bit of an interesting episode. I initially had the AI set incorrectly although even when I had set them correctly I was then too slow. Started from the back of the grid, fought my way up to sixth place again without changing the difficulty so it kind of just showed that the AI a little bit too inconsistent between qualifying and the race. Gained some decent points on Ivan Ortola and pretty much sealed this third place in the championship. It is mathematically possible he could beat us, but it is pretty much sealed as long as I just score a few points in this finale. Before this finale, we are actually going to do another last to first challenge. This time actually intentionally, not like in Qatar, where of course we just qualified last. Because I did a test, 120% AI, the AI were really, really slow at the circuit. And if you remember back to the debut season, we were pretty competitive here as well. So that's kind of how I'm gauging it a little bit as well. The AI are obviously just not so good at some of these circuits. And I think it'd be nice to have one last hurrah in Moto3. Hopefully have a good race, maybe try and win as well. Just to improve our reputation a little bit further for when we are picking our Moto2 ride. But without any further ado, we may as well get straight into the race then for this final round of the season. I'm looking forward to getting started and seeing how high up the grid we can get. I actually completely forgot that we had to beat Marrera in this race. It's actually our turning point, so that's obviously a target for us. Marrera, you can see, is starting second place on the grid, so if there wasn't already an incentive to get towards the front, I've definitely got one now. On Chu in fourth place, which is nice to see, a bit more realistic. Of course, he's a championship contender in real life, but in the game, most of the time, he is absolutely nowhere. And here we are down in 28th place on the grid, the very back of the grid. And I am really looking forward to getting into this one and just trying to fight our way through. Of course, like I say, there is now a bit more of an incentive to try and get that steady nerves turning point, achieve it and to beat Diogo Marrera. Now, I'll probably talk about my lap time at some point during this race as well. Just to put it in perspective, my fastest lap in the debut season was 1 minute 41.5 in qualifying. So, so that is the target to beat. Of course, I probably will reference it a couple of times throughout the race, but I just thought I'd tell you that one. So if I do say that I'm going X amount faster than the debut season, you now know what the lap time was. But without any further ado, let's get straight into this race and try to go out with a bang from this Moto3 class. Riders in position, the green flag waving at the back of the field. Maximum focus now, only a few seconds before the start of the Valencian Grand Prix. So Ortola on pole position then, putting himself in the best position to try and steal this third place away from us. But here we are, the lights are on. Wait for to go here for this final race in Moto3. Lights out, and away we go. Actually missed the start a little bit there, so not the ideal way to start our final race. But it's okay, we've got 12 laps. I think we'll find our way through the pack quite easily. So as we go down towards the first corner, try and break nice and deep. Up the inside of a few riders, Carrasco being one of them, Alonso another one. So a little bit unrealistic there that Alonso is so far back in the field. We've got such a good run out of turn one. We're already up into P18, up the inside of the P17. And we're going to probably get somebody else on the exit. There's that Salvador, I think it is. So up to P16. And we might have to get Forasato. A little bit of contact with Forasato. And there we are, already up into the points. 15th place after three corners, well, turn four. So yeah, well, yeah, we'll say three corners because we were in front of him before we got to turn four. So pretty unbelievable. Up the inside of Yamanaka as well. This is on 120%, by the way. I've not turned the AI down. I've, in fact, I've turned them up for this episode because we're running 100 in the previous one. But just shows that some of the circuits, the AI are absolutely awful. And the minute we're two seconds behind Marrera, who's sat in second position. So a couple of seconds to bridge through the leaders. Nothing too bad there. But to pick the bike up, though, not to hit Joel Kelso. Almost hit him at the back. It's actually allowed Ryusai Yamanaka back through who once again, of course, in these like last few rounds, it's quite ironic that we're battling with him because, of course, in the debut season, that was our objective, was to beat him. And we failed to do so quite badly, really. Um, I mean, I definitely got the AI difficulty wrong for some of the races, but also, whilst I was still learning the game, I was definitely struggling compared to Yamanaka. But Yamanaka overtaking us a season on, that's not what we want to see at all. We should get it back. Oh, I've been in contact there with Yamanaka. I do apologise. I thought I was going to have a little bit more space than that one, but it did close up pretty quickly. But either way, back up into P14, got plenty of time to go, so no panicking whatsoever. Gap is still two seconds to the guys in front, so we've got plenty of time to try and make our way through. And in the stream here of Joel Kelso, as we go down towards turn one, we should be able to break him, because the AI, once again, are just so weak on the brakes. Up the inside, actually, to be fair, Kelso wasn't too bad there. I think it's probably it's a slightly faster corner. In fact, I've run a little bit wide. 
Kelso almost got the cutback, but into turn two, you'll probably see the difference inside of Rueda and Artigas. I think we've got Rueda. I think Artigas is going to hang around the outside. He does indeed. So up into 12th place. So we're almost up into the top 10. And we might actually be able to get Artigas and Ricardo Rossi around the outside here. Rossi still on the inside. So we've got Artigas. We're up into 11th place. Almost up into that top 10. But I'll tell you what, Ortola is trying to check out. So we might have to try and pick up the pace very slightly. Just to get to the back of him, but like I said, of course, there is 12 laps, so I think we should be absolutely fine. Ricardo Rossi still holding station in front of us and keeping an eye on my fuel as well, because of course, you can get caught out by that one we did in Phillip Island, although that was with a red flag, not actually just due to me running out of fuel. I've not done that for quite a while, but I have done it in the past, so again, it is something to keep an eye on. Something I forgot to mention as well, actually, is that it's a title decider here between Moreira and Holgado. Of course, you'll know that if you saw the previous episode, but if you didn't, Yes, it's actually a very close championship battle, so those two will be fully focused on each other. So that's probably why they're allowing sort of Ortola to get away, because they're just too busy battling each other. Ricardo Rossi goes wide, and we're up into 10th position now then. So already up to the top 10. It's not even taken us two whole laps to go from the back of the grid up into the top 10. And hopefully we'll be past a few more very shortly. We've picked up a challenge as warning, so we've got to be careful. Although, again, you get five of those, and it should be fine. And to be honest, I think we could probably still win even with a long lap penalty based on the pace, but a 41.5 there for Kaito Toba. What did I just do? A 41.3, so quicker than what I did in the debut season by a couple of attempts in qualifying there, and that's in traffic as well. Sorry, Toba didn't do the 41.5. I think that was uh, Ortola before Toba crossed the line. But here we are on the outside of Munoz, and we're going to get a bit stuck on the outside here through turn two. I didn't really want to go around the outside of Suzuki, but I wasn't really... I was too close to him to jump to the inside, if that makes any sense. I thought I was just going to hit him at the back if I did. So I just went to the outside instead. But we rode past Munyoth like he was standing still. I wasn't even trying to pass Munyoth, but somehow we did. And now we're seeing a bit of a battle of the energy drinks here. The Leopard boys beating up the Red Bull rider of Dennis on Chew. And we're going to follow them through up the inside of Dennis. Up into P8, but he's going to hang around the outside to be fair to him. So Dennis actually got back in front of us. So fair play to on Chew there. Can we try and get him down towards turn eight? Up the inside we go. I think we have done. So up into P8 now through turn eight. And next up then it is Tatsuki Suzuki. Although again, Onchu still trying to hang around the outside. Had a bit of, bit of battling with him in the previous episode, actually, didn't we, at uh, Qatar? So his AI has definitely been upped, I think, in probably the most... Well, I'd say the most recent patch, but the game hasn't been patched for a long time. So not sure what it's all about. He just seems to have found his form a little bit in these last couple of races in the career mode. I'll tell you what, Suzuki's the man on the move because he's passed Onshu and Masir on this lap and he's looking all over the back of his countryman, Suzaki. Well, then Masir's coming back at him and down towards the final corner. We're going to try and get two Leopards for the price of one. And we've actually ended up with zero of them. Sticking our hand up there to Masir because to be fair, he did just completely bash me out of the way. But again, it is fine. No worries at all. We're actually only 1.5 seconds off of the second place man now. So we're actually still making progress towards the front of the field even with all this battling going on behind. And you can see Otola's not pulling away too much now. He pulled away a little bit on the opening lap, but they seem to have kept him pretty much at bay from now, so he's not going to pull away any further by the looks of it. And again, having to go around the outside of a Leopard rider through turn two, they just break so early, it just catches me out. We're going to try to pick up the power. Can we try to carry the speed through? We're pretty much in the same position we were on the last lap. And again, still trying to go around the outside. Probably wondering why I'm trying to do that, but I'm just trying to open it up rather than actually having to try and outbreak them or risk them being risk them turning in on me because of course that happens quite a lot and that's another track limits warning so that's two already in the space of four laps so we've got to be careful oh Suzuki sat up in the middle of the pack for some reason kind of held Messiah up thought about it into turn 11 although Messiah is uh, more than thinking about it on his teammate and he takes a position up into P6 so the Leopard swap once again now Suzuki's in a bit of trouble. We're, again, we're stuck on the outside because they just seem to get to the inside every time I want to put my bike there. We're going to go around the outside of him into the last corner. Don't pick up another track limits warning, please. Suzuki back up the inside, but on the power at the last corner. We've squared him off. And there we go, up into P7. Masia now, the rider on the move, because he's trying to overtake Suzuki. So a couple of laps ago, it was Suzuki doing the same thing. And Masia does the fastest lap of the race on that lap as well, a 40.8. I can still go much quicker than that, but... The minute whilst I'm just trying to find my way through the pack and trying to do it cleanly, our times aren't quite what they could be. We could do a double overtake here into the tilt the inside of Suzuki. Not Suzuki, sorry, Suzaki and Masia. Because I've been battling Suzuki before getting my two Japanese riders mixed up. Very similar names as well. So when you start to say one, you're almost saying the other's name as well. But up into P5 then. We've got Kaito Toba in front of us. Then Danny Holgado and Marrera. So that's the battle for the championship 
obviously in October, um, Holgado and Marrera battling for that championship. And then we can see ahead of us, Ivan Ortola as well. But of course, our target today really is to beat Marrera because Ortola could beat us. Doesn't really matter. We've got like 20 points on him. So as long as we score a few points, it doesn't matter if he wins the race or not. Oh, a bit of contact with the two championship contenders there. I think Marrera and Holgado have a little bit of contact. As Holgado tried to go around the outside of Marrera. And Marrera wasn't having any of it. He picked up the power even more, I think, there. And actually, Holgado is looking a little bit vulnerable now to Kaito Toba behind as we come up towards the line we're about to probably do the new fast stuff of the race we are 40.7 and it looks like Marrera is going to get two for the price of one there go past him not quite actually Toba backs out of it probably sensible probably doesn't want to get involved in the championship fight but Holgado finds his way through Marrera is actually the one leading so Holgado definitely needs to beat Marrera I don't think it's how we go with Kaito Toba can we try to get Marrera as well again I don't want to get too involved in the championship fight I know we could play a bit of a part in it but I'd rather not nerf anybody out the way and we've actually been re-overtaken there by Toba because I've been a little bit too cautious. And Marrera's now wide again. So Marrera really looks like he's struggling. i tell you what, Ortola looked to be struggling there. He went wide as well. And to be honest, Holgada's pretty much breached that gap to him. So it's now a bit of a pack of five for this race win. Yeah, Holgada is really looking for that race lead now. He's trying to go around the outside of Ortola. So to be honest, I might have to start trying to pick my pace up as well because Holgado may very well be the threat now. We've seen this before where I've sort of been comfortable, sort of sat there a little bit like I am now. And we've lost out because of it. And we've passed Toba there on that occasion. And we're now towards the back of Marrera. Can we try and pass him cleanly into the last corner? Inside we go. We've overtaken him, which of course we need to beat him in the race. But I don't want to really mess with this championship too much. We're edging him out towards the edge of the track a little bit there. Side by side with Diogo. He'd be better off letting me go. I know it's going to affect him right now. I mean, at the minute he's actually still leading. The, he's going to win the championship by actually a decent few points there. As it stands. So to be honest, Marrera is probably better off just trying to keep his cool. Just keep a decent pace. Because Holgado has pretty much got to win the race by the looks of it. And gain a decent amount of points on Marrera. Because I don't actually know what the gap was going in. I knew it was less than 25 points. So I know it's technically a uh, decider. But Holgado is quite a bit behind. It's a, it's a decent chunk. So as long as Marrera finishes somewhat decently, championship is his. Yeah, my point basically was that Marrera may as well let me go because I'm probably likely to beat Holgado as well. And there's no point sort of tripping himself up, battling with me and potentially coming off worse from an incident or just being involved in incidents at all. But yeah, Holgado has definitely dropped the pace in the last couple of laps because he's all over the back of Ortola now. And I'm going to try and go with them. We've got half a second behind to Marrera, so us three are pulling away. Seems like we are the quickest riders on the circuit at the moment. Although I've still got quite a bit of pace in hand. I'm just not overstressing myself at the moment. Although Ortola's had a pretty good sector here. He's put a bit more time into Holgado. And we're all over the back of Holgado now. So at the last corner, he's a little bit of slipstream on Daniel Holgado. We are going to probably overtake him on the run to the line. Maybe not going to quite beat him before the line. I think we just about did there. New fast up again to me. 1 minute 40.3. Like I said, of course, there is plenty more time on the table. As we've seen, we're going probably over a second quicker than we were earlier on in the pack. And here we go. We've got the run out of turn 1. Flying past Ortola, up into the lead of the race. So that's pretty much oh, well, it's all of our objectives complete now. You can't do any better than winning the race. But of course, we were gonna we we're gonna be fine with Ortola in the championship. But beating him obviously absolutely steals anything. And beating Marrera as well is great for our turning points. So on lap eight, we hit the front. And let's see if we could check out. Another track limits warning. Gotta be careful, only got two more of those left. It's unlikely to pick up this many in a race, actually. Uh, quite clumsy ones as well, really. That was very, very clumsy. So then we've got the gap out to eight tenths of a second already. One minute 39.9. Like I said, this is more getting towards my pace now. I knew I had 39s in the locker. And I didn't have to particular. Oh, I am pushing, don't get me wrong, but I didn't have to take ridiculous risk or anything like that. So it looks like, to be honest, we are just going to pull away from the AI. It should be a pretty easy victory as long as we just stay on the bike. We've got 1.3 seconds already. So another new fastest lap of the race. On that lap then for me. Now two and a half seconds in the lead. But the fuel is on 0.4, so I may just turn it down just to, just to play it safe. No point running out of fuel. Although it's back up to 0.5. We'll see how we go because we're on the penultimate lap of the race. So I suppose it's going to be getting a little bit lower. We made a bit of a mistake there through turn two. As soon as I lose focus slightly, make it a small mistake, but over three seconds of the lead, well, it was very briefly over three seconds of the lead, so nothing to worry about with the AI behind. So here we are then, about to start the final lap 
of this final race of the season. And here we are looking at the championship standings. The gap's going to be 10 points as it stands. So yeah, to be fair, Marrera had a pretty big lead going into this one. If Holgado did win the race, it would only be one point in it. But Holgado has not even been able to beat Ortola. So he did pretty much all he could do. He beat Marrera, but Marrera has played it cool. Got a solid top five. And he is on course to become the world champion. But of course, don't speak too soon. Absolutely anything could happen yet. There's a crash, for example, on this final lap for Marrera. Of course, that would hand the championship to Holgado. But as long as he keeps on board, he should be absolutely fine. But we're looking on course to win yet again here in Moto3. I don't know how many wins this season it's been. It's not going to be the championship, which is definitely a surprise. Usually you do tend to win the championship in these games. But with the way that AI were when the game first came out and... I'll be honest, I probably set the AI a bit too high in a, in a few rounds, just to, just thinking that I had the potential to improve a little bit of pace over the weekend, but sometimes the AI also made a step, and that definitely put us in a bad position, especially some rounds like Argentina, for example. We probably could have got a little bit more out of that one. Obviously, Austin, we suffered in qualifying, had a good comeback of the race, although you guys actually never saw that video because the recording was corrupted. But here we are then, through the final corner, our final corner in Moto3 to win our final race in Moto3. What a way to end the season. So there we go then, two and a half seconds in front of Ivan Ortola at the flag. It does seem like the simulated times have had some sort of effect, which is the perfect way to end the season. Because you can see we haven't actually got the fast lap of the race, which of course we would have done because the AI couldn't get anywhere near that. They could do sort of a mid-40 maybe, but they definitely weren't doing a 39. Let's actually have a look to see who that is who's got the fastest lap. It is Lorenzo Fallon in 20th place, who finished 12 seconds behind me. A 39-0 as well, so it's not an insignificant amount. So I think it's fairly safe to say that's a simulated time. And to be honest, we have been plagued by those all season, so it is a fitting way to end. But in the championship then, Diogo Moreira is the world champion. Unfortunately, we weren't actually in a position to win. You can see we were pretty far behind, 67 points. We definitely lost that early on in the season. We had a lot of bad luck as well with the way that some of the races went. Of course, we probably threw maybe 25 away at Philip Island, for example. And, you, you know, you put that on, we're kind of a bit more in the mix. But the AI did their damage at the start of the season. We pretty much stayed a similar distance in the second half. We were, I think we were about 80 points behind at one point. We ended up 67, so we haven't actually gained that many points back on them. But we have had a bit of an up and down season, I think it is fair to say. And those guys... Definitely deserve the championship more than me, just based on their consistency alone. But we do end up with third place, which, to be honest, I'd have taken after the first few rounds of the season because we were absolutely nowhere. As for the team's championship then, Leopard actually win it ahead of MT Helmets. MT Helmets were going into the last round with the lead, but Leopard, a consistent ride from both of the riders that actually gives them the team's championship. So something to celebrate there. No rider's championship for them, of course, but still the team's championship, very, very good for them. Empty Helmets with pretty much a one rider team there in second place. Same with Red Bull KTM Tech 3 as well. Most of these teams are pretty much one rider teams because the, the second AI just wasn't good enough. CF Moto, probably the first balanced team because to be fair, there were wins, a couple of wins for Kelso throughout the season. RT Gas was pretty good as well. So so to be fair, they were pretty much balanced. But again, with MTA, you had Ortola basically carrying the weight. Of course, us, I don't think Scott Ogden even scored a point all season. So, yeah, it was uh, definitely an interesting team championship. Leopard winning, basically, because they had two riders that could consistently get in the top 10. So there you go, then. That is the final round of the season. That's our Moto3 career completed. So we'll head back to the career. We should have achieved that turning point by beating Marrera, so that will be good. And I'm sure we'll be presented with the team choice, which, of course, I am going to leave up to you you guys so without any further ado let's get back into the career hub so we've got actually a decent amount of reputation there 10,750 which of course is the most that we've had because we achieved the objective steady nerves we managed to get in the top 10 in the race and in the championship and we've got an extra little bit for winning the race so that's always lovely and here we are then we've got the season concluded screen so third place in the championship actually only four race wins it feels like a lot more than that but fair enough we got nine podiums Three pole positions, five fastest laps. Probably could have got a few more pole positions if we hadn't done our last to first. And perhaps a couple of race wins as well that I probably missed out on from doing that one. But, oh, we actually got top five in the championship. So it said top ten, but because it updated, of course, during the season because we're doing so well that it's actually top five, which, of course, we did achieve pretty easily in the end. 
But here we are now then, presented with the team selection screen. Of course, I am going to leave this up to you guys. Like I said, I'm going to do a poll, but I will run through all of the options to show you. And we've got some pretty interesting offers here, so I will run through them. The first one we have got is with the forward team, of course, the forward chassis alongside Marcos Ramirez. We need to get top 10 in the championship and try and score points in each race. It seems that's probably going to be the same, actually, for every team, because we've got RW Racing here alongside Barry Baltus, of course, on the Calyx this time. So that's another option. And then we've got Ital Trans alongside Joe Roberts. Of course, that is the official teams. We have also got some fictional teams as well. We've got Parts Europe, Bosco Scura against Ricardo Casadei. And then we've also got the Tisso forward racing team, which I guess, again, is the forward chassis with Andrea Akinwa. There is also then three Moto3 options, but of course, we're not staying at Moto3. We are going up to Moto2. So there you go then, guys. Those are your options for the next season. Like I did say, I will leave a poll up. In fact, the poll will probably go live before the video, just so it's got a little bit longer for you guys to actually be able to pick. But I will leave a link to it in the comments below if you haven't seen it on my community post. But that is Moto3 complete now, guys. So hopefully you have enjoyed that one. Hopefully you did enjoy the race as well. A good last to first challenge. If you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe. It really does help me out. And of course, it's a win-win for both of us as you get plenty more MotoGP 23 game content in your subscription feed. So it is, of course, like I said, a win win for both of us but i hope you enjoy the rest of your day hope you're staying safe and i shall see you in the next one